Good morning and happy Sunday to each and every one of you. My name is Sister Shirley Faye Cobb and I am a member of the Amazing Grace Missionary Baptist Church where the amazing pastor is Reverend Curtis Wooten Sr. First giving all praises to God, the Almighty, the Magnificent, the Marvelous, the Mighty God who is the head of my life today. And I count it all joy that Pastor Wooten asked me to read one of the poems from my book, Mending the Hole in My Soul Through Poetry, a collection of poems. The one that I'm going to read to you is called, I Am Not Ashamed, and I pray that you will enjoy it. You see, I despise getting up and going to church. I guess because the preacher's voice made me feel worse. For his voice I thought was loud with a judgmental tone, and I shook with fear of hearing a fire and brimstone. It looked as if he was staring directly at me, and I prayed that someday I could be set free. As he closed his sermon and opened the doors for baptism, there were many who repented so their sins could be forgiven. Suddenly, my mama nudged me to go and take that walk, and finally I did so she wouldn't fuss and talk. When I came out of the water, I didn't feel any better. So I went back to the in crowd and became a trendsetter. Drugs were the fad, so I used them all as a substitute. And naturally, this caused mom and me to have a dispute. Then I stopped going to church for a number of years, and my siblings said mama cried a river of tears. So I lost sight of reality and almost lost my mind. But my God kept me from dying, saying it wasn't my time. Instead, he picked me up and gave me back my life. And I'm blessed to have a testimony today about my toils and strife. See, for a long time, I wouldn't face the real facts that I've done a 180 now, and God put me back on track. And mama, if you can hear me since your stroke left you lame, I finally know the gospel, and I am not ashamed. I want to elaborate on why I wrote that poem. God allowed me to write a book called Mending a Hole in My Soul Through Poetry. And this is one of my favorites. I am not ashamed of the gospel. You know, I came from a family of faith. You know, I was raised in the church, went to church most of the time. And I strayed away. I graduated from high school, attended Methodist Hospital School of Radiology Technology. Worked for many of years there before going to Los Angeles, California, where I worked at some prominent hospitals there as well. But somehow, I steered away from what my family had taught me. I had a praying mother, praying father, praying sisters and brothers. I'm not going to blame anything on them. I became addicted to crack cocaine, and that little drug nearly stole my life. But God brought me back brought me back to my senses. Surely I'm not through with you yet. I have work for you to do. So I want to tell anyone that is struggling with an addiction like I did, is that there is a cure, and that cure is Jesus Christ. But you must believe, you must have faith. Today, I am not ashamed that my parents took me to church. I am not ashamed of the preacher's sermons. I am not ashamed of the glory of God. If anyone's listening, especially my mother who is in the heavens above and my father, I'd like for you to know, I finally know the gospel and I am not ashamed. Thank you so very much. that if you're a child of God, you can observe how you're going to act and how you're going to react to God. I remember when Abraham took his son up on the mountain and he told those to stay here. And only he and Isaac went up on the mountain. And then when he got up on the mountain, God was taking him up somewhere to take him through something and see how he was going to react. And I stopped by to tell you that it's only a test. And he wouldn't, as Sister Wooden said this morning, at the end of the test, yes. there's a test of money. Yes. Amen. And at the end of every battle, I want to yes. stop by to tell you that there is a victory. Yes. So there's no need waiting until the battle's over. You might as well shout now. Yes. 
But I stop by to tell you, if you're a born again child of God, you're in a fight, but you're in a big fight. Amen. God already saved you. And, and, and sometimes, especially when you go back to the end of the book and you know what the story is going to be, then you can, you can hang on because you know that the end result is going to be in your favor. Amen. Abraham didn't know exactly what was going to happen, Sister Erica, but he knew that God would make a way. Anybody ever been in that position that you don't know what's going to happen? All you know that I know is going to be all right. He, he, he didn't know, Brother Brown, because the son of the God said, Dad, anybody ever called him your heavenly father? He said, Daddy, I, I see all of this. I see, but where is the sacrifice? And sometimes you can't see your way. You just simply ask answer what God, Abraham, said to his son. He said, Son, he didn't see the sacrifice himself, but, but let's take his son, God will provide. Anybody know that God will provide? And then he, he, he not only that, but when he, he, he knew that God would have a ram in the bush, but he didn't know where the ram would come from. And sometimes we don't know where it come from, comes from, but we do know that it's coming from God. I heard somebody say, I don't know how, all I know, God made a way. And I heard somebody say, I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Has God ever made a way for you? Praise the Lord. We just thank God for making a way with us. I'd like to read this in, in Habakkuk, when things was a drought, when things were short, and they didn't know how they were going to make it. And Habakkuk stood up before the people. Sometimes we need to stand up and tell people how good God is. God just keep on blessing us and we just keep sitting down and God keep on blessing us. And let me tell you, God will not allow you to be better to him than he is to you. But Habakkuk said, even though the fig tree have no blossom, and then he said, even though there's no grapes on the van, even though that the olive crops fail, even though the fields will be empty and barren, even though the flock dies in the field, and even the cattle in the barn are empty, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I stop by to tell you that whatever you're going through, you need to rejoice in the Lord. Because God will make a way. And not only that, back up, but if we had David here, David say, even when my enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard against them. And then he said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God is walking with me. Anybody know God will walk with you? But you got to be willing, Harold, to go through in order for God to bring you through. And don't be afraid because God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Somebody ought to praise God on that alone. We have so much to thank God for because God has been good to us. I remember that even when the children of Israel were going through something and then they wanted to go back. I don't know about you, 2019 may have been a good year, may have been a bad year, but I don't want to go back. I'm looking forward and I'm pressing on to the high quality of God. But there was some who want to go back. Uh, Brother Harry but Joshua said, you can go back if you want to. But as for me and my house, I'm going to praise the Lord. Anybody feel like praising God in the house today? He said, we got to go. Praise the Lord. And, and then Joseph, I remember Joseph. When Joseph was a dreamer, but it wasn't enough. Won't God make a way for you? And not only that, Peter was a powerful preacher, but it wasn't enough. He had to take Jesus to come down and die for our sin. And as we look at this and we began it, it said Jesus began to teach them about what was about to happen. He got ready to let them know that some things he had to go through. And amazing grace, some things we just got to go through. But I tell you, you may be going through, but no matter what it is, God will be there with you. I stop by the gate. I, I know those who have had uh, children, I know wouldn't it be nice 
if you can bypass the nine months of pregnancy? Wouldn't it be nice if you could skip the, the labor? Wouldn't it be nice if you could skip the delivery? But no, no, no. You got to go through that in order to see that beautiful baby. Now stop by to tell you, amazing grace of squad, you all just got to go through something to see what God can do at the end. What God make a way for you. And Jesus, we're going to keep here. Jesus called his disciples together. He, he was telling them that the son, the man, got to go through these things. And I know it's not right, but it's still, I have to go through some suffering because it is necessary. I know it's not right. I got to go through some scorn, even though it's not right, but it is necessary. I got to go through some sacrifices, even though it's not right, but it's necessary. Amazing grace, you may realize some things you're going through, you may feel it's not right, but I stop by to tell you that it is necessary in order for God to make a way for you. But then Peter, and anybody know who Peter, the one who said, the, uh, Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church. The one that was up on the housetop who saw the animals grow, the one that went down to Joppa and told the world about Jesus, the one who was known as the big fisherman, he stood up and started defending or started rebuking Jesus. Let me tell you, amazing grace, don't you know God knows what he's talking about? Don't you know God knows what he's doing? So when you don't know, just turn it over to Jesus. He'll work it out for you. But then the word says, he rebuked Jesus. Don't get angry at Peter. I like what he did. The lente, he rebuked Jesus because he knew what Jesus was talking about. He turned around and said, Jesus, and what he was simply telling him, you are ready, proving your point. You are already fed 5,000. You are already did the came. You are already raised up the dead. You are already did all of these things. You don't have to prove the thing. The amazing grace, no matter what you have done, people still going to want you to prove you who you are. But Jesus turned right back around and said, Peter, he wasn't mad at Peter. He was simply just telling him, I understand you're trying to defend me, but I don't need you to defend me. Won't God make a way for you? I don't you know he didn't need anybody to defend him because I heard him say, if I, if I want to keep my life, I can keep my life, but I'm going to lay it down. No man can take my life except I lay it down. If I want to, I can call a legion of angels and they'll fight for me. Won't God make a way for you? And then he turn around and say, get me behind me, Satan. But you don't know what you're talking about. If I don't go to the cross, if I don't be crucified, if I don't be spirit in the side, if I don't be laid down for the dead, and then I won't be able to get up. But they spirit him, they kill him, they crucify him, they put a crown on his head, but he then he said, if I be lifted up, anybody know that you can lift it up. If I be lifted up, after all men unto me, I was so glad he refused to appear, but I stopped by the
Savior. And I will give you rest. He died. Do you believe he died? He didn't go through. You know, somebody says sometimes the shortcut is only cutting you short. Sometimes we can't take a shortcut. But when Jesus was in the garden against him, not that he was trying to take a shortcut, but he said, Father, remove this cup away from me. He didn't want to go through it. But he realized in order for God to take him through, he had to go through. When he stopped asking to take away the cup, and the man said, sometimes great, sometimes we ask God to take away things. Be careful. God gives us some things. Don't ask God to move that mountain. But ask God to able you to go around or to climb that mountain. Family, he said out there. Oh, Cabaret Harold, he said, Father, not my will. What he simply was saying, Robert, let me go through. And when he went through, they led him. The Sanhedrin trial him, and they found him guilty. They crucified him, and they laid him in Joseph New too. As he had already said right early, I'm going to get up. And because he got up, but in order for him to go through getting up, he had to get go through being put down. Sometimes God allow, allows us to get knocked down so we can get back up. Can I get a witness here? Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul was on that old domestic road. But God had to knock him down. When God knocked him down, he said, now I see the light. He was on the wrong road. But he said, now, but now I'm on the right road. Doesn't matter what road you are on in, 19, in 2019. Get on the right road today. Amen. Get on the right road. If you're on the right road, if you're on the right road, God will guide you. Be not dismayed. Whatever the tide is. Do you believe he died? He died. But he said this. In other words, yes, I'm going to do my part. But I need you to do your part. That's where it came in by picking up your cross and following me daily. And then, amazing grace, when he did that, the fig tree that he saw was down. But I stopped by to tell you, he didn't need the fig tree anymore. Because he was going home where he didn't hunger anymore. That, 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 that woman we met at the well, where he said, drink, he didn't have to drink anymore. Because he said, I am the living water. If you drink from me, you'll never thirst again. So some things that you have to go through of ancient grace, don't run from it. Just take it. Because I want to let you know, whatever you're going through, God will be right there with you. And the easy way out, and I finish, the easy way out is just to leave and give up. God didn't give up on us. The song that they sung, don't give up on God, because God didn't give up on you. Do you believe that amazing day? And all he asks us to do is to do this. And remember of me. As often as you do this, you remember that I said. But when he went away, he didn't stop us now. He said to us, there's still going to be some trials. And there's going to be some uh, uh, temptation. But if you just hold on, I'll be there with you. So when you're going through something, somebody once said, when you see me crying, that's my train fare home. I don't know about you, Amazing Grace, but I thank God today that he didn't give up. He didn't stop. But he went on to prepare a place for us.
when he went to his disciples, he took the bread that represented his broken body and he said unto them, take this in remembrance of me. And they took the bread, the broken bread, that represented his broken body when they took the lashes and they whipped him all night long. After being led from church and hall to church and hall, he never said a moment of word. Pilate said, I find no fault. But they found two that falsely accused him. And he but he said, he said that no man can take my life except I lay it down. He died for you and he died for me. And he said, take this, eat. Let us take this represented his broken body. And we take, you say, eat ye all of it. And then he took the cup that represented his blood when they speared him in the side. Let us take, let us drink ye all of it. As he finished that, the scripture tells us that they went to the Mount of Olives. And we thank God on this day. I thank God that there is a fountain filled with blood set a plunge beneath that fountain. Lose all my guilty stain. He died for our sin. Lose all my guilty stain. When you go underneath the blood, you're being washed. You're being washed as David said, wash me until white as snow. Wash me with his son. He'll change you. He died for you. Father, we thank you for dying for us. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults and giving us another opportunity. Thank you for hanging upon that cross. Thank you, Father, for we realize that you hung the sun, the sun, but yet you died underneath the scorching sun. We realize that you made the trees, but you had to hang upon a tree. We realize that you made Adam, and Adam all sinned, but in you, you gave us life. And you gave us hope. Thank you. And evermore go with us. We pray these and other blessings. In the name of your son Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen.